Hi everyone, Colin here and welcome back to another aquarium video. Now it's the start of a new year, 2023, and there's some things going on. Let's jump into it. Okay, it's summer in Australia, it's really hot, the air conditioners are on full bore, and the java fern in this tank is just going bananas. So obviously, I'm going to go and buy another CO2 bottle to get this thing going even faster. I've made my own CO2 pressurized system using a SodaStream CO2 gas bottle and a regulator that I got from a home brew company. The great thing about this system is just how cheap and easy it is to get new CO2 bottles and how cheap they are to replace. I've got my empty canister and I've just got a five minute walk down to the local corner where there's a petrol station or a gas station. And that is where they sell new bottles of CO2 soda stream gas. All right, we've got one busy road to cross. Make one quick turn from the dog park and we arrive at the gas station. But not this gas, I want this gas. So empty bottle goes back for exchange, go inside get a key, come back and grab myself a full bottle. Okay, so I've paid the money inside, they've given me a key and I unlock the box that holds all the new gas cylinders. And there we go. Okay, return the empty back onto the side go into a new box make sure I've got a heavy one and the heavy one has got a seal so I know that's a brand new bottle ready to go close the padlock and give the key back to the attendant so brand new full bottle that'll last me about three months for that $19 Australian and it's a quick two or three minute walk back up to my house and back over that busy road and past Frank's Cakes that has fantastic coffee and a lovely afternoon tea to enjoy. That is by far the easiest thing I've ever bought for my aquarium. So some of you will be thinking why would I want to get more CO2 if I've got this many plants in the tank already? That's a good question. So it came to me watching a video from John at Half Man Half Cichlids and he has got some absolutely insane uh, Amazon swords and cryptocurrinies growing in his tanks which are massive, very tall tanks and the growth is far more than you'd expect anyone to have in a home aquarium. Now John has his um, heavy root feeding plants in pond baskets, not in substrate. And the way that he pots his plants, there's a video to watch, I'll put the description down below so you can uh, link to that. But he's growing his plants in these pond baskets where they, the roots access liquid nutrients from the water column from the mesh on the sides of these pots. Anyway, his growth is insane, but also his nitrate levels are as good as at zero. Now, for those who have been watching this channel for a while, you'll know I got some Seachem denitrate. I bought a litre and a half, which I've got in this tank to specifically lower my nitrate levels. When I measure my levels, I'm often about 40 milligrams per litre, which is at the border between just okay and you don't want it to go much higher. So I bought the Seachem denitrate for it to make an effect and make a change, bringing those levels down lower. But it's been three to four months now and that product does say that to see noticeable results, the levels have to be about 20 milligrams per litre first in the aquarium. And then you'll see results begin to bring it lower and lower from there. So my goal has been to get this tank at 40 milligrams per litre nitrates down to 20. And this is why I've gone out and bought some more CO2. I had stopped buying the CO2 because the plants have grown this much and this well. 
and I didn't really want to grow them any more any faster because I just can't sell them fast enough. Which is why on the bottom of this video in the description is a link to buying some more aquarium plants from me uh, because I've got to get rid of some plants. This tank is just chock-a-block full. Now, I'm going to put the CO2 bottle back on. I'm going to get the diffuser bubbling and grow these plants even faster because that will assist to draw down the nitrate levels to another level lower that will help the seachem denitrate kick in so that the bacteria that are forming in that area in my canister filter and in a plant tray I've got suspended those bacteria will do their little bit and bring it even lower again and we'll see what we get so here we go so to connect the new bottle up to the regulator I've got to remove this plastic uh, film here there's a plastic um, cap to take off and then using a good size spanner tighten the two brass connections together so it's nice and gas leak sealed but just before I put it together I will put some Teflon tape around the thread all ready to go as it's being screwed onto the thread I would recommend using two spanners to really give it a nice tight seal and there we have CO2 bubbles coming out of the ceramic diffuser but I haven't used this for about oh, eight or nine months so the drop checker has gone very very low I can't really see how many bubbles per second it's doing so I've got to stop it disconnect bubble checker refill with liquid to the halfway mark and then we'll know how many bubbles per second so we're not going to overdo the CO2 and gas all these fish that's a very big danger when it comes to using pressurized CO2 gassing all your fish so I've taken the drop checker off the line I've opened it up over the sink put some more water in and now we can see how many bubbles there are per second in the beginning you're going to see bubbles in the bubble counter before you see any bubbles coming from the diffuser just wait as the pressure accumulates behind the ceramic it'll start to have a fine mist of bubbles come through but the drop checker just make sure it's a bubble per second maybe even two per second let it just gradually equalize the pressures and start to come from the diffuser and the first bubbles have started to appear now that will get a bit stronger as the pressure continues to increase and now we're off and racing the key to remember about pressurized co2 is just how potentially deadly it can be and you want to have some you don't want to have too much and even that little amount there that is coming from that diffuser is plenty and that is going to circulate around the aquarium and over the next few hours as the lights are on this is going to really drench those plants in dissolved CO2 and the growth will really skyrocket. Now as the growth of the plants becomes faster, you're going to draw in nutrients much faster and I'm going to see a drawdown in nitrates as a direct result of speeding up the growth of the plants and then they will help the seachems denitrate bacteria that are in this tank start to do their job and lower those nitrates but once again I do have too many plants in this tank and I need to sell some so if you're in the market for some fantastic Java fern crested the windelob variety I highly recommend it there'll be a link down below to an eBay site where you can buy them directly from me so please help yourselves give it a good price so expect an update very shortly on how the nitrate levels in this tank have changed hopefully with the addition of the pressurized CO2 running again when I thought I wasn't going to now a couple of very important points about pressurized CO2 in a home aquarium and that it can be such a deadly thing for fish if it gets out of control so I have got a DIY homemade put together pressurized CO2 system using the SodaStream gas bottle and a home brewery regulator. Now I manually turn it on 
by turning a knob <clears throat> to increase the pressure to begin the bubbles. I can see the bubbles through my bubble counter. And once I know that that is stable, I get the diffused CO2 bubbles coming from the diffuser. And I'll have that running during the daylight period only in this aquarium. Every single night when I come home from work, the first thing I'll do is come to this tank and I'll manually turn back the adjustment uh, knob, turn it totally uh, loose and off, and stop the pressure, stop the gas coming <clears throat> to the bubble checker and the diffuser. So I'll manually, I have to turn it off. I really do not want to have CO2 bubbles going all the time overnight. I don't need CO2 at night. The plants don't need it when there's no light to photosynthesize. And it's more deadly at night for the fish. So with this system, it is one that I manually had to turn on and manually I must turn it off and I must not forget to turn it off. That is really, really important. Now there are systems that you can buy which are automated with a solenoid and that will automatically turn it on and off with the lights. It's a bit more money and it's more than I'm going to spend on my tank because I'm quite happy manually turning it on and off. But whatever you do, never forget to turn off pressurized CO2 at night. And thank you to John at Half Man Half Cichlid for getting me thinking about CO2 again with the incredible magnificent growth that he has in his aquarium with his amazing Amazon soil plants. So check out his video on how he grows them the way he does in his uh, pond baskets and I will get back to you on the results in my tank. Thanks for watching this video and here is some more videos that you can check out coming up.